Hello everyone, I'm Nikhil and I'm going to talk about our results on perfectly secure asynchronous MPC for general adversaries. This is joint work with my co-author Ashish Chaudhary. A secure multi-party computation protocol allows a set of parties to compute a function of their private inputs while guaranteeing certain security properties even if some of them are corrupt. As the corrupt parties can collude with each other, they can be considered to be corrupted by a central adversary. One can consider several notions of security, like privacy, which means that the honest party's inputs are not revealed to the adversary. Correctness, which means that the honest parties do not output wrong values. Independence of inputs, which means that the adversary cannot base his inputs off of the honest party's inputs. Guaranteed output delivery, which means that the honest parties always receive the output. Clearly, such a list is not exhaustive and different applications may have different requirements. So we consider the following ideal model, where the parties have access to a trusted third party. They can send their inputs to the trusted third party, who interacts with the adversary, computes the outputs, and sends them out to the parties. A protocol in the real world is considered to be secure, if a real-world adversary can do no more harm than an adversary in the ideal world. Secure multi-party computation protocols can be classified based on their communication model. In the synchronous model, there is a globally known upper bound on the message delays, and the parties have access to synchronized clocks. As a result, the computation can proceed in rounds, where at the end of each round, if a party does not receive an anticipated message from another party, it can simply deem it as corrupt. In the asynchronous model, there is no such upper bound on the message delays. The only guarantee is that the messages of honest senders are eventually delivered. As a result, if a party does not receive an anticipated message from another party, then it cannot be sure if the party is corrupt and never sent a message or if the message was delayed. Asynchronous protocols do not have input provision, which means that the inputs of some honest parties are ignored for computing the output. They also have worse resilience and worse communication and computation complexities as compared to synchronous protocols. We care about the asynchronous model because it models real-world networks like the internet better. Asynchronous protocols are also inherently responsive and can take advantage of faster networks by working at the network speed. Most secure multi-party computation protocols in the literature assume a threshold adversary, that is, an adversary that can corrupt up to a certain fraction of the total number of parties. However, this can be limiting. For instance, consider the following example, where six parties running different operating systems would like to run an MPC protocol. An adversary that can breach the security of a certain operating system can corrupt all the parties running that operating system. Let us assume that the parties want to have computational security. That is, the adversary's computation time is bounded above by a polynomial. Also, let us assume that they would like to have guaranteed output delivery. In such a case, they cannot use a threshold protocol, as any threshold protocol in such a setting can tolerate only up to two corruptions. To get around this, the adversary's corruption capability can be specified by an adversary structure which is a set of potentially corruptible sets of parties. The adversary structure is monotone in the sense that any subset of a potentially corruptible set is also a potentially corruptible set. However, we only consider maximal sets of parties in the adversary structure to avoid redundancy. The adversary structure has size possibly exponential in n due to the total number of possible subsets. Such a specification offers increased flexibility. However, comes with the downside that known protocols have communication complexities of a constant power of the size of the adversary structure. Also, the computational complexity is bounded below by the size of the adversary structure. We consider the following setting of n parties where each pair of parties is connected by a private and authentic channel. The adversary is computationally unbounded and has infinite computing power. We consider the setting of perfect security which guarantees zero probability of error. 
The adversary is malicious, which means that apart from being curious, the adversary may deviate from the protocol instructions in any arbitrary manner. We consider the asynchronous communication model, and as a result, the adversary has the power to schedule the messages in the network. The adversary's corruption capability is specified by an adversary structure consisting of potentially corruptible sets of parties. For the existence of secure multi-party computation in this setting, the Q4 condition needs to be satisfied, which basically means that the set of all parties should not be covered by any four potentially corruptible sets of parties. The high-level idea of the MPC protocol is as follows. The parties represent the function that they want to compute as an arithmetic circuit over a field or ring. The input values are then shared among the parties in such a way that if a sufficient set of parties come together, then they can reconstruct the values. However, the adversary learns nothing about the input values of the honest parties. For computing the shares corresponding to the output wires of multiplication gates, the parties need to participate in an interactive protocol. However, the shares corresponding to the output wires of addition gates are locally computable. In this way, the parties compute the shares corresponding to the output wire, which are then used to reconstruct the output. Most previous work on general adversaries considered the synchronous communication model. The work of Hurt and Mortar initiated the study of general adversaries and presented feasibility results for MPC. Later works presented protocols with polynomial complexities in various settings. More recent works have focused on further improving the communication and computation complexities. There are several other works on general adversaries in various different settings. In the asynchronous communication model, the only other work is that of Kumar et al., who also considered the setting of perfect security. They presented an asynchronous verifiable secret sharing scheme based on monotone span programs and also presented an asynchronous MPC protocol. However, we show that their asynchronous MPC protocol is flawed. In our work, we present an asynchronous verifiable secret sharing protocol based on an additive secret sharing scheme and an asynchronous MPC protocol. The work of Kumar et al. uses an asynchronous Byzantine agreement functionality but does not present a protocol for it. In this work, we present a generalization of the asynchronous Byzantine agreement protocol of Canetti et al. The MPC protocol of Kumar et al. uses the player elimination framework which is commonly used by protocols tolerant to threshold adversaries in the synchronous communication model. The framework relies on a non-robust sub-protocol, which succeeds with all the honest parties receiving the correct outputs if the malicious parties behave honestly. If the malicious parties do not behave honestly, then all the parties agree on a set of conflicting parties, after which the non-robust sub-protocol is executed again with updated parameters. The protocols using the framework somehow guarantee that after enough iterations of the non-robust sub-protocol, all the honest parties end up receiving the correct outputs. Let us now consider an example execution of the protocol of Kumar et al. Consider the following set of seven parties and consider an adversary structure as follows. The adversary structure satisfies the Q4 condition. This is easy to see because the five parties P2, P3, P4, P5, and P7 all belong to different adversary sets in the adversary structure. The protocol of Kumar et al. deploys several non-robust sub-protocols which succeed with the honest parties receiving the correct outputs if the malicious parties behave honestly. If the malicious parties do not behave honestly, then this is identified by some honest parties who broadcast accusations against these parties. This results in a conflict between the parties and the protocol ensures that at least one such set of conflicting parties is agreed upon. As the adversary has the choice of deciding which honest parties and which corrupt parties end up in such a conflict set, we consider the following conflict set. Their protocol ensures that the conflict set is either a pair or a triplet of parties as in this case, 
and consists of at least one corrupt party. The protocol then updates the party set by excluding from it the set of conflicting parties. This is because the honest parties do not know which of the conflicting parties is corrupt. Their protocol also updates the adversary structure by excluding from it the sets which have no overlap with the conflicting set. This is because the conflicting set contains at least one corrupt party. However, it is easy to see that in this case, the adversary structure remains the same after the update because the conflict set has a non-empty overlap with every set in the adversary structure. Their protocol then deploys the non-robust subprotocols along with protocols for asynchronous reliable broadcast and asynchronous Byzantine agreement among the sets of parties in the updated party set. However, it is easy to see that the updated party set and adversary structure do not satisfy the Q3 condition. This is because the following three party sets in the adversary structure covered the entire updated party set. The Q3 condition is a necessary condition for asynchronous reliable broadcast and Byzantine agreement, which is why their protocol cannot be secure. RMPC protocol uses a verifiable secret sharing protocol that is equivalent to the following ideal functionality. There is a designated dealer D who has a private input S. The trusted third party waits to receive Q shares from the dealer where Q is the size of the adversary structure and sends these shares to the parties in such a way that the ith share is sent to all the parties except the parties in the ith set in the adversary structure. The functionality guarantees that if the dealer is honest, then the value S is shared according to the sharing scheme specified and also remains perfectly secure. On the other hand, if the dealer is malicious and the honest parties do output shares, then these shares correspond to a sharing of some value S star held by the dealer according to the sharing scheme specified. Our verifiable secret sharing scheme proceeds as follows. Consider the following example adversary structure. The dealer D has a private input or a secret S. He chooses Q uniformly random values where Q is the size of the adversary structure such that they sum up to give the secret. He then distributes the shares in the following way. Consider the share S3. This is distributed to all the parties but the parties in the third set in the adversary structure. So in this example, all the parties except P1 and P4 are distributed the share S3. Such a sharing scheme was first presented by Maurer. The intuition is that if P1 and P4 happens to be the set of corrupt parties, then S3 acts as a one-time pad and the secret remains perfectly secure. It is easy to see that any set of parties that is not a subset of a potentially corruptible set collectively possesses all the shares S1 through SQ. This suffices to guarantee security for an honest dealer. However, a malicious dealer may not distribute the same share to all these parties. So the parties engage in pairwise consistency checks where they exchange the shares received from the dealer and if a party PI finds that the share received from another party PJ is the same as the share received from the dealer, then it broadcasts a confirmation message. The dealer is assigned the task of using these confirmation messages to find a core set of parties who agree on the share received from the dealer. However, such a core set of parties does not include a potentially corruptible set of parties. This is because of the asynchrony in the system. In our example, let us assume that the parties P5 and P6, which is a subset of the fourth set in the adversary structure, is ignored. Upon receiving the core set of parties from the dealer, the parties verify the validity of the core set, and if the core set is valid, then the share S3 is fixed. However, the parties that were excluded from the core set may not have received this share from the dealer. So they take the help of the parties in the core set to compute this value. More specifically, they rely on the shares sent by these parties during the pairwise consistency checks. Once again, 
Due to the asynchronous nature of communication, a potentially corruptible set of parties is ignored. However, the parties that are considered contain at least one honest party due to the Q4 condition of the adversary structure. A similar technique is used by the reconstruction protocol. Our MPC protocol uses an asynchronous Byzantine agreement protocol that realizes the following ideal functionality. There are n parties each having an input bit who would like to agree on a common bit. The trusted third party receives the inputs of the parties and sends them to the adversary as privacy is not a requirement. The adversary gets to specify which honest parties the trusted third party must ignore due to the asynchronous nature of communication. If the trusted third party finds that the considered honest parties all have the same input, then it sends this input to all the parties. This captures the validity property. If, however, it finds that not all the considered honest parties have the same input bit, then it sends the input bit of a corrupted party to all the parties. This captures the agreement property. Our asynchronous Byzantine agreement protocol is built using the standard framework of building asynchronous Byzantine agreement from a common coin protocol and an AVSS protocol. A common coin protocol allows the parties to output a common random bit. We use our perfectly secure AVSS protocol to build a common coin protocol that is a generalization of the threshold protocol of Kanetti et al. While the protocol of Kanetti et al guarantees that all the honest parties output a common bit with a constant probability, we find that our generalized protocol only guarantees a success probability that is greater than 1 over n. This is because the success probability of our protocol depends on the largest potentially corruptible set. Our asynchronous Byzantine agreement protocol is almost surely terminating and terminates with probability 1. Due to the success probability of our common coin protocol, we find that the expected running time of our ABA protocol is of the order of n squared. Our MPC protocol is built using our pre-processing phase protocol using the circuit randomization technique of Beaver. Our pre-processing phase protocol is built using our AVSS protocol and a protocol for evaluating multiplication gates. The protocol for evaluating multiplication gates is as follows. Consider values A and B that are shared using our AVSS protocol. Then the parties can compute the sharing of the product by computing the sharings of the Q squared product terms as shown. Consider now an example adversary structure and the shares A1 of A and B3 of B. The parties would like to compute a sharing of the product. Recall that the share A1 is available with all the parties except the parties in the first set in the adversary structure. Likewise, B3 is available with all the parties except the parties in the third set in the adversary structure. These sets satisfy the Q3 condition as the adversary structure satisfies the Q4 condition. Consider now the parties P3, P5, P6, and P7. As these parties hold both the shares A1 and B3, they are responsible for sharing the product of these terms. However, an honest party cannot wait to terminate the sharing of all the parties in this set as some of the parties might be malicious and the system is asynchronous. Also, different honest parties might terminate the sharings of different dealers. So for this, the parties use an asynchronous agreement on a core set protocol, which is built using n instances of asynchronous Byzantine agreement. Um, using this protocol, the parties agree on a set of parties whose sharing instances eventually terminate for all the honest parties. Due to the asynchronous nature of communication, a potentially corruptible set of parties is ignored from the core set. Let this set be P7. Consider now the core set of parties. Their sharing instances eventually terminate for all the honest parties and let the values that they shared be V1, V2 and V3. The parties now reconstruct the differences d1 equals v1 minus v2 and d2 equals v2 minus v3. 
If they find that the differences are all zero, then they take one of these sharings to be the sharing of the product. Notice that in this case, the parties do not compute an incorrect sharing because the core set contains at least one honest party. If however, the differences are not all zero, then it means that the core set contains at least one corrupt party. This means that the adversary already knows the shares A1 and B3. So the parties simply reconstruct A1 and B3 in the clear and take a default sharing of A1 times B3. To summarize, we studied asynchronous MPC tolerant to general adversaries. We showed that the MPC protocol of Kumar et al. is flawed and presented perfectly secure AVSS and AMPC protocols. We also showed a generalization of the asynchronous Byzantine agreement protocol of Canetti et al. There are several future directions for our work. One is to improve the communication complexity of our protocols. Our protocols are based on an additive secret sharing scheme. One could also construct protocols that are based on secret sharing schemes based on monotone span programs. One could also construct efficient protocols with non-optimal resilience. Also, the settings of statistical and computational security are still unexplored. Thanks everyone.